Hi Scorpio, this is Teresa from tarotbyt.com. I'm getting ready to do your October Love Taroscope. And so before I do that, I want to ring in some good energy for this reading. I hope you're enjoying the month of October. And thank you for liking and subscribing to my channel. Thank you for commenting on on the page and thank you also for those who have um, ordered readings I appreciate your support and I read all the comments so thank you thank you thank you keep them coming um, so what's coming up for October for Scorpio you've got a full moon in your sixth house of work and health so something's coming to culmination there and there might be some power struggles involving relatives in the third because the third house Pluto's in the third house so um, that rules brothers sisters cousins aunts uncles neighbors um, so there may be some intense conversations happening and it, it may be dredging up some um, some deep material that's been something that's been brewing for a long time is finally coming to a head and you have to deal with it and then you have a new moon in your 12th house, which is a good time for um, having an, uh, releasing psychological blocks and having a new beginning. Um, so there were, might also be surprises around work, too, because you have Uranus going through the... Uranus is opposing um, the moon. And Jupiter moving into Scorpio. Jupiter is going to be moving into Scorpio. Um, that's that's going to be great. You're going to have you're, this next year. I mean, when it really finally moves, right now it's probably in your twelfth house. But when it moves across your ascendant and into your first house, you're going to be golden for a whole year. It's going to bring opportunity. Um, so hang on there, hang on. <laughs> if if things are not what you know, you may start the month off a little bit rocky. But and we all are because we're all going to be dealing with this T-square with Pluto. Only different areas of our lives are going to be affected. Um, but by the end of the month, um, I think things should we, ha we should have some surprising developments because Uranus and Jupiter opposing each other um, can bring some surprises. There could be some uh, who knows with Uranus. You never know what's happening. But there is a new beginning in Libra. And Libra is usually is a sign of um, diplomacy and, you know, trying to compromise. See that everybody's needs are being met, looking at both sides. Uranus is the sign of the, re the rebel. So there's some interesting, you know, people might be rebelling at the end of the month. <laughs> um, we'll see what happens. But let's see what's going on. For Scorpio for the month of October in love. What does Scorpio need to know about love in October? What is coming up this October in love and anything else that might be important? What, what important energies are coming up for Scorpio? Okay, let's see. Five of Swords. The Death card. The Eight of Pentacles. The Page of Wands. The Two of Cups. Three of Swords. The Sun. The Two of Swords. The Four of Pentacles. The Six of Swords. Okay, so you might be going... You might be traveling in October. Um, if not literally, then at least figuratively. The five, you start the month out with five of swords and you're feeling victimized. You're feeling that you're dealing with someone's hostility. You're dealing with a situation that you just can't win. You can't fight. You can't win. You can't fix. Um, this is a card of, you know, it, if someone is pushing your buttons... Um, wanting you to draw you into a drama, wanting you to react, do not respond because 
if you retaliate, and you know how Scorpios love to retaliate, <laughs> um, revenge is not going to be sweet. Revenge is going to hurt you. So this is a card of cutting your losses, seeing the truth in a situation, cutting your losses and moving on. Realizing I can't fix this. I can't deal, you know, this is not going to change. No matter what I do, I'm not going to change this current situation. I have to move on. So the death card comes here to remind you that you have to clear out what's no longer working. You have to let it go. Um, and you have to make room for the new. If you don't clear out the old, you're not creating the space for something new to develop. The death card is clear. It's a clearing card. It's a transformation card. So you are changing. You're transforming. And in the process of that, you have to let go. It's like shedding a skin. You know, like a snake sheds the old skin before the new skin can, you know, take hold. You can't have new skin on top of old skin. So you're shedding some skin in October. You're realizing, you know, i got to let go. I've got to move on. I've got to let go. This, whatever's no longer working, I can't keep holding on. I can't fight because if I fight back, I'm going to get hurt. You know, we're both going to get hurt. It's like, you know, going down with the ship. Or So you're only, the, the best way to handle this hostility is to not respond, not get caught up in the drama, and just make plans to, you know, like what they say is instead of fighting the existing conditions, Put your energies on creating a better situation. Create something new. Don't try to change the old. So here you have the Eight of Pentacles. This is a card of, you know, working on something. You're working on maybe a new career path. Um, you're learning some new skills. Um, you're trying to take your career in a different direction. And you're starting to receive some good news. The Page of Wands is like a, it's a message. And it usually means um, happy news, something um, that brings joy to your life. So it could be news from a relative that um, you know like, that you're celebrating or you're happy about. You know, maybe you hear from someone and they give you some encouragement. Um, there could be a partnership in the future. The Two of Cups, and there could also be the ending of a partnership. Like the Three of Swords here is a cutting away. It's a cutting card. It's a hurting card. So you're hurting. There's there's someone in your life. Maybe a relationship is breaking up. Or you've had a falling out with someone who you, that you really care about. And you're both hurting. Um, and it, it could be that one of you is waiting for the other to make the first move toward re reconciliation because you have this two of swords here. So the person that you're involved in is on the fence. They don't know what to do. They have to make a decision, but they're afraid to act. They're afraid to take a step. Um, they're, it's almost like they're waiting for you and you're waiting for them and so nothing's happening. You know, they, they want to reach out to you. I feel like there's someone that wants to reach out to you. Um, but they're afraid that they're going to get hurt. They're afraid that hurtful words might be exchanged. Um, but there is someone who's really sorry. Um, someone's feeling sorry. They don't really want to be... Um, um, they don't want to be out of your life or they don't want to have this conflict. Um, and so you might hear an apology or you might... Um, they haven't made up their mind how they're going to do it or how they're going to reach out. But you're both hurting as a result of this argument or this condition, this this breakup or this this sorrow. Sometimes also the Three of Swords can mean that you just have to cut away what's no longer working. Um, so th there could be a relationship where you're feeling victimized or you're feeling that there's hostility in the relationship. Um, there could be a new relationship. You know, maybe there's an imbalance, like one person's doing all the giving and the other person's not appreciating the gift, you know. Um, but you have the sun here. So the sun is going to help you come to some kind of peaceful resolution. It's, it's, um, you still need to move away. You have to cut things out that aren't working. You have to accept the, the loss. But you can salvage something from the situation. 
It doesn't have to be like a complete ending. Like with the Ten of Swords, it's like complete, you know, it's dead. With the Sun, um, you can heal the, the wound. You can heal the pain. Um, in your wish fulfillment sector, you have the Four of Pentacles. So you could be concerned about security, hold, um, financial security with the Four of Pentacles. But it, also it's a card of holding on too tightly. So, and maybe trying to control someone. So maybe you need to let go. Maybe you've been holding on too tight to someone. And um, you're, too, you're being too controlling or you're being too possessive. And you need to kind of relax and say, hey, all right, let me let go. It's out of my hands. Let me let go. Don't, I can't control the outcome. You know, um, I have to let go. Because um, sometimes when you hold up, when you try to hold on to someone, you wind up pushing them away. Um, you know, relationships have to be a give and take. There could be someone in your life who doesn't realize that they have to give to receive. You know, they could be just expecting you to give all the time. And um, they don't understand that there should be a reciprocal thing. That you can't just keep giving to someone who's not giving back. So, um, this card comes up when you have to kind of go with the flow. You have to learn to relax and go with the flow. And let things develop the way they're supposed to develop. Um... The Six of Swords is a card of harmony. Sixes are cards of harmony. Like fives are instability. Okay, you start out with instability. Um, things are changing. You have to accept the changes. You now, whether you like it or not, you have to accept it. Things are changing. You have to release what no longer serves you. You have to let things go that don't fit anymore. You know, and it may involve, you know, heartache as you're letting go of people that you really care about or you're accepting, you know, something that's, there could be hurt feelings involved. But um, you are moving toward greater harmony with the Six of Swords. You're moving away from a difficult situation and you're moving toward um, something that's more harmonious. So there could be a relationship too coming up. Um with someone that you really see eye to eye with and maybe you just had a maybe it's just a temporary falling out um, and you can patch things up again but you can't hold on you have to let go you can't hold on to this person you have to give them space you have to give them freedom and you have to have a communication this is six of swords you can create harmony through communication especially since um, the new moon that's falling in your um, 12th house on the 19th. That is connected with Jupiter and it's connected with Mercury. So the way out of the situation is communication. You have to talk about things that maybe were you've hidden, that were hidden. You know, maybe you've had feelings or thoughts that you kept to yourself and you haven't discussed them with anybody. Now, you need to bring them out. You need to get that out in the open so that you can come to some kind of resolution. Um, I think the outcome will be positive. It'll be like a healing conversation, and it'll be like closure, some type of closure. Um, you know, maybe there was a misunderstanding. Um, maybe the person, you know, there was some kind of falling out and the person didn't realize that you were hurting or something. I don't know. Whatever it is, you have to communicate. Um, and so this new moon gives you that opportunity. You could create a new beginning, but you need to communicate and talk about what you've been keeping hi with hidden within. You've been keeping things, you know, the 12th house is the house of secrets. It's the house of psychological undoing. It's the house of hidden enemies. It's the house of karma. Um, so all these things are being activated at the, this month. You know, how do I self-sabotage? What is it that I'm not seeing? What is my blind spot? What do I need to see and admit and bring to the surface? What's hiding, lurking in my unconscious? What's, what unconscious programming do I have to look at and deal with? And maybe I need to talk about something. Maybe there's like a wound that's been running my life from behind the scenes, you know, 
that I haven't been willing to face or deal with. So these are the issues. You have this opportunity for this new beginning to release yourself. Because Uranus, you know, is the, um, it's the rebel, but it's also uh, the freedom fighter. You know, it's, it, it's going to break you out of a rut. So if you've been stuck in some kind of uh, pattern, Uranus can come along to break you out um, at the new moon and help you to see things from a different perspective. Um, so, and because you're, you're, so there could be some surprises that, in your job, some unexpected developments. There could be some health issue that pops up. So you need to, that may have a psychological, uh, origin. So you need to take care of yourself in October. Take care of your health, eat healthy, get exercise. But more importantly, you have to focus on psychological health. There could be some psychological block or blind spot that you're not seeing that you need to bring to the surface so that you can heal and release. Um, and then you'll find that the end of the month is much more positive. You can overcome this. You've got the sun. So the sun can help you overcome whatever you're dealing with. But you are still going to have to let some things go. You're going to have to move on. You're going to have to accept the reality of something. And you can't change it. You can't fix it. You know, it's out of your hands. It's out of your domain. The only thing you can control is your reaction and your response. You can't control what other people do. You can't control what other people say. Um, but you can control how you respond. So don't get caught up in drama in the month of October. Because there's that potential, you know, with these energies that are at play. Especially around the full moon. It's going to be a lot of drama, a lot of power plays, a lot of manipulation, you know. And especially that it's happening in your third house of communication. Pluto in your third house, you may, you're going to have to watch <laughs> that um, you don't go over the top with, you know, your, your words. Because you can cut someone down pretty harshly with Pluto in the third house. You can really, you know, throw those swords... Uh, and, you know, with words, the words, your words can be like daggers with Pluto in the third house. I mean, you're going to hit the target and you're going to go deep <laughs> with Pluto. So you don't, you want to be careful that you don't hurt people beyond, you know, you, you might hurt with your words. Or you may hear hurtful words yourself from, from people that are close to you, like, you know, cousins, brothers, sisters, whatever, uh, relatives, neighbors. It could, there could be some harsh communication with Pluto there or people using words to manipulate or words to, you know, control. Um, so don't fall for any gaslighting. Don't fall for any, you know, manipulation um, during the, this full moon. Um, and work on yourself. Just work on your blind spots. Work on, you know, what is it about me that oh, tends to react when this person pushes my button? What do I have? What's this wound that I need to heal so I don't react? So they can affect me this way. You know, those are the questions. Um, it's, it's about healing um, a hidden wound. Um, a cycle, how we self-sabotage. You have to stop that. You have to stop self, you have to start honoring yourself taking better care of yourself and stop self-sabotaging. But the only way you can do that is if you reveal, you know, you have to take the veil away. <laughs> you have to reveal um, the thing that you've been sweeping under the rug. So, um, or the thing that you've been afraid to face or the thing that's just been locked in your subconscious. You have to bring that out. Bring that up, see it, release it, move on. And be free of it. Uranus can help you be free of it. <coughs> and the sun promises a, a favorable outcome. You have the strength to overcome any of this. But you have to start thinking positive. This is in your negative thinking sector. You're thinking like, oh, nothing's ever going to work out for me. The sun here is saying, yes, look, you have these two cards here. The two of cups and the sun. That's the potential. You just have to overcome a few hurdles and drop your guard. Be, it's okay to be vulnerable. It's okay to tell someone, hey, you hurt me. My feelings are hurt. 
you know. It's okay to let someone know so that they can fix it. And communication is going to be your friend in October. Um, and I know it's hard for sometimes for Scorpio to let go. You know, you kind of like, you never forget. <laughs> you know, you, when someone hurts you, you carry that with you for a long time. You got to release. You got to learn how to release um, because that's only hurting you. It's like, you know, someone stabs you and you leave the knife in for years. You know, you want to take it out and heal. So you don't want to retaliate because that's only going to create more karma. You want to move on. We're in a new age now where we're dropping, you know, retaliation is a thing of the past. We need to practice love and forgiveness and compassion. That's going to take us into this new age. Um, so I wish you the best, Scorpio. Um, love, healing, and happiness for October. And happy Halloween and happy birthday uh, for those of you born in October. And um, I hope this reading was a help to you. I will talk to you again in November. Okay, thank you. Bye now.